Kaduna State to help us from this bola, to pack this bola away. Not only do they have challenges in dumping their refuse properly, most areas do not have access to proper toilets and good drainage system. Their mouth contains all these particles of diseases, bacteria and the rest. They are light on every food. And you can open it easily, even in, in clean eateries where there's flies. You have a, a bottle of coke with straw in it, you are still discussing with yourself. The fly has touched it, you don't know. You drink it, there's slowly you have typhoid fever. You begin to wonder where do I have typhoid fever? Similarly, even when you are taking your pure water, you drink part of it and put it on the ground, the part on where you are going to eat. They are so smart. It's as if they are destined to sort of carry disease, transfer disease to us. So we can have typhoid fever, cholera, dysentery, and other. In 2011 alone, over 300 people contracted cholera in Kaduna City and Zaria town, owing to the poor hygienic environment and lack of access to clean water. The state Ministry of Environment says the government is making efforts to clean up some of the affected areas by engaging contractors to collect and dispose of waste properly. Government is working out a system whereby uh, the, the way waste is managed in the low density areas and the way it is managed in the high density areas would be different. We are already working to see that most of those drainages in various locations are desilted, especially that uh, we are moving to a very, very serious period of uh, heavy downpour. Certainly, some of these diseases can be controlled if the residents are willing to dispose their waste properly and the state government is ready to sanction airing contractors assigned to clean the environment. Thanks for staying with us. Welcome to News Track on Channels Television. I'm Joka Rogers. And I'm Charles Aruka. These are the stories and reports we're tracking this hour. The Federal Executive Council has set up a three man investigative panel to unravel the circumstances surrounding the procurement of two armored cars by the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority. The panel, which is headed by a former head of service of the Federation, Sally Bello, is mandated to find out if the purchase followed due process, the purpose for which the vehicles were procured, and any other incidental matter. Briefing Stenhouse correspondence after the council meeting, the special advisor to the president on media and publicity, Dr. Ruben Abati, said that the panel has two weeks to submit its report. Having received information uh, about the reported purchase of armored vehicles by the uh, NCAA and the various allegations, uh, President Gilbert Jonathan had taken the initial step of uh, asking the Minister of Aviation, Ms. Um, Stella Odua, for explanations. And I think that that is in the public domain. So it will not be right to say that uh, the President uh, is not well seized of the matter. Uh, but also, uh, President Jonathan has also to be taking 
a step further, and you will probably be the, the first set of Nigerians to hear this, by uh, setting up an administrative panel of inquiry, a three-man administrative panel of inquiry. This panel has the assignment to investigate whether the uh, procurement process with regard to these armored vehicles follow due process. This three-man panel is also to find out the uh, purpose for which the uh, vehicles were procured and then to uh, inquire into any other incidental matter. This three-man panel will be chaired by the immediate former head of service of the Federation, Alaji Sali Isabelo, the National Security Advisor, Colonel Sambo Dasuki, retired, will be a member of that administrative panel. And then we have as the third member, Air Vice Major Dick Irue Nabere, retired. The Secretariat for this panel, which is expected to uh, submit its report within two weeks, will be provided by the Office of the National Security Advisor. Let me uh, assure you uh, that President Jonathan would like to uh, assure the general public that nobody, no matter how highly placed they may be, will be shielded or exempted from this inquiry that he has directed, and that appropriate action will be taken against any person or persons who may be found guilty of misconduct or the misappropriation of public funds, either in this respect or in any other respect. The Special Advisor to the President and on Media and Publicity, Dr. Ruben Abati. Well, the troubled waters around the aviation minister, Stella Odua, are not receding as she appears to have more explaining to do. Now, this is because members of the House of Representatives Committee on Aviation have denied ever approving the purchase of two armored vehicles for her. Our correspondent, Lanre Lassisi, reports. For the last few weeks, the country's aviation sector has been under focus. From the associated airline crash to recent controversies over the purchase of $1.6 million armored cars by the Nigeria Civil Aviation Authority. The sector also caught the attention of the House of Representatives. A lawmaker brought a motion on an airline being denied landing rights in Kano State. Worried that blocking Qatar Airlines has crippled the prospect of the North as their push for international trade and business. Is going backward. It was a motion that passed without debate, and our her committee was set up to look into the matter. But the controversy over the purchase of armored cars was the one that caught the attention of the lawmakers. It will be absurd, unthinkable, and indeed unpatriotic for an agency of government to connive with its political head to incur such an expenditure simply for the comfort and safety of one public officer. The law make a move that the House Committee on Aviation investigate the matter with some particular focus. Whether the purchase was authorized by any appropriation law. Three, whether the Nigeria Civil Aviation Authority has been complying with the Fiscal Responsibility Act. An issue an official of the NCAA had tried to address. This due processes involves going through the National Assembly. We have the uh, Committee on Aviation on the House of um, Reps has an oversight you know, function on, um, on my organization as much as um, the Senate House Committee on Aviation. So there is no document um, if I'm talking about uh, IGR approvals and all that. Yes, it must go through those processes. This was a response the lawmakers disagreed with. Nigerians know that where the, where the leakage is coming from, 
not the National Assembly, because as a committee, we are mindful of what Nigerians need, we are mindful of what the aviation industry needs, we are mindful of the regulation, uh, regulatory uh, uh, needs. So we approve what we think is, is, is supposed to be used by NCA, not armored vehicles. The House Committee on Aviation has been mandated to conclude its investigation.